I'd like to take a second and um, talk a little bit about toxic femininity um, because contrary to what a lot of people believe, uh, toxicity is not just based on one gender. Uh, it applies to both males and females. And so I want to share with you uh, something that I have taught many of my female um, clients and uh, associates uh, in the past. And it is my hope if you're a female and watching this video that it helps you the way it has blessed uh, many others. The word toxic simply means poison. That's all it means. And unfortunately, when people are poisoned, sometimes they are aware that they're poison. Oftentimes they are not aware that they're poison. I drank a small cup, uh, a little bit out of a cup of washing detergent that my mom left on the table when I was six or seven years old and I thought it was juice. It had no odor. And I drank some and told my mom and uh, she freaked out and called the hospital and said, what should I do? And they said, give him some water, give him some milk. I think it was milk. And, and in time he will be fine. What I've discovered with females in general is that many females that are toxic aren't even aware that they're toxic. And the big reason, again, there are many reasons why you can be toxic. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But one of the huge, most, you know, the, the largest reasons why women are toxic is due to a lack of good decision making. It is the lack of making good decisions that causes you to be toxic. And I'll explain. Part of this is rooted in the relationships that you have with males in your life or have had with males in your life, perhaps in the past or maybe in the present. And I don't think we should minimize the impact of having healthy um, ladies, having healthy relationships with males or male figures in our lives, um, father figure like folks in our lives that we are not attached to sexually, um, physically or any other or in any other romantic type of way because this creates a foundation by which we can measure, or you rather, can measure your relationships with men in the future. Now, this isn't a perfect art, perfect art or science. You can have great, healthy male relationships with your uncles and your father or whoever else and still turn out um, to celebrate hot girl summer every summer and have an unlimited body count. It's very possible. So it's not you know, a perfect science, but research does give us an indication that a lot of times females who do have healthy relationships with the male figures in their lives that are non-sexual in nature, um, non-romantic in nature, and they are healthy, they have a foundation by which to measure the male relationships that they have that are romantic in their futures. And we see this oftentimes from a judgment standpoint, because then if you've never experienced healthiness in a male relationship that was non-romantic, then you have no measuring stick by which to determine if the relationship or connection you're in that is romantic is healthy or not. And so the baseline foundation of having healthy male relationships in your present or past that are non-romantic helps to build a foundation by which you can make solid decisions or better decisions as it relates to the connections you have with men in your future. Now, this again connects largely to decision-making because when a woman does not have healthy male relationships in her past and those unhealthy relationships have created trauma or cause brokenness in your life, then you begin to evaluate desire from a place of brokenness and not from a place of wholeness. In other words, you evaluate what you are attracted to. You will evaluate what you desire for your life in a man from a space of not being healed versus from a space of being whole. And so then what you perceive to be masculine then oftentimes really it's just an evaluation that attempts to overcompensate for what was lacking in past male relationships. I'll say this a very simple way. If you have only experienced um, 
poor male, non-romantic male relationships in your past, you may see masculinity as toughness, right? Um, wife beat or toughness, uh, physical strength, um, looking like a man man, right? Um, and you may only equate masculinity to that and thus then have the output that says, well, I only like guys that are hard or now I hear this a lot with females that I coach, you know, you know, Dr. Zeb, I love a thug, right? I love the thugs. Why do you love thugs? Because in their mind, they think that's masculinity, but it's really rooted to unhealed trauma in the past that causes them to think that a man is only a man if he's hard like a thug. But that's because they are evaluating their desires in extremes. And when you have unhealed trauma from the past in your life, you will evaluate desire from one extreme to the other. You will either see masculinity as the thug or you'll see masculinity as the guy who is emotionally intelligent. He's, in, he's intellectually intelligent. He's mature in that, spe that spectrum, but he may not come across as a man man. And both diagnoses aren't completely accurate because whole masculinity can have a combination of both. I get this a lot. Well, Dr. Teller, are you telling me I can't have a guy who's a man-man and he's also emotionally mature and intelligent? You absolutely can. And that's the whole picture of masculinity that is very possible. But you won't be able to see that. And oftentimes you will settle for less than that when you are evaluating what you desire or who you desire from a hurt or a wounded place. And so it's so critically important that you understand that if you look at what you have naturally been attracted to in your life or what you have attracted into your life as it relates to the male relationships, romantic relationships that you have had in your life, I guarantee you that if you had those relationships from a space of not being healed or wounded from past male relationships, then how you evaluated the health of those relationships was in large due to the lens of not being healed that was present in your life that caused you to label something as masculine that was really dysfunctional. And here's the kicker. You can't blame the man for that. You cannot blame the man for your toxicity when it comes down to having poor judgment and who you choose or determined to be masculine, especially when that determination is rooted in unhealed trauma. Remember this and don't ever forget it. A female with unhealed um, wounds or trauma from the past will evaluate desire from a place of trauma, from a place of hurt, from a place of pain. And when you do that, you will find yourself accepting dudes that are strong and buff and tough and they can bend you like a pretzel and make you feel great physically but when you have a bad day at work you won't be able to have a conversation with them because that's not the masculinity you signed up for you only signed up for baby boy and you were expecting to get somebody that was whole and complete at the end of the day understand that toxic femininity is so often rooted in the, the judgments and the decisions that you make. And those decisions are so often rooted, so often rooted in your past experiences with men and in those spaces in your life where you have not been healed. And if you don't get healed in those spaces first, you're going to continue to make dating and judgment mistakes over and over and over again. Toxic femininity doesn't always look like, again, slashing tires or busting out windows. So often it looks like making the same bad mistakes in judgment over and over and over again. And that gets worse when you begin to blame everybody else for your poor decisions, but yourself. I hope this made sense. If it did, do me a favor. I want you to type church in the comments with three R's. And then remember, you've got two jobs. One, be better today than what you were yesterday. And two, don't forget what I told you.